guys, you're watching Zuan and Only. My name is AJ. Welcome to a little bit of a spin off episode. I usually do these on the first of every month. It's something different to the gaming stuff, brings a little bit of diversity. You get to see a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff. But on the first of January, I put out the new PC build video uh, of benchmarking and building it. And you guys seem to love that, really enjoy that. So thank you ever so much. And in that video, I asked if you wanted to see an updated 2017 setup video because getting the new computer required me to shuffle around my desk a little bit. And I've had a couple of new toys since then that I haven't shown you yet uh, and you guys thought it was a sick idea so we're gonna try and go through it in the most chronological order that I possibly can uh, so we'll start off with the mic that I'm speaking into right now I never know exactly how to say it but I'd say Ayuna a-U-N-A, -A, Ayuna, it's a condensing microphone, uh, Mic 900, I think is exactly what it's called. If you want to know any of the specs and like names of all the stuff of uh, my computer and, and everything, you can either go in the description of this video, I should, if hopefully, remember to link everything that I talk about, or you can go to the About tab on my actual channel page, that'll have my computer specs and all that kind of stuff. It does get updated as often as I change anything, so you can be sure to go and check that out. Uh, so yeah. It's a decent mic. It wasn't an expensive mic. It's a little bit damaged and squished. Now the um, shock mount used to be round, but where the microphone has every now and again fallen over and hit the ground, the shock mount has done its job, sort of, uh, but it's sort of squished to more of a sort of ellipse <laughs> shape. Uh, but it still works. It still works great as a shock mount. Uh, there's a couple of little scratches here. I think it was about £60 because I'm here in the UK. You'll have to convert it to dollars yourself. About $80 I think is roughly what it is. $80-$85 uh, it was at the time. I'm sure the price has come down now. It's the best microphone that I've ever bought. Uh, I used to... I've gone through a few mics in my time but this one I've had the longest and for me the sound quality is actually really really good. Uh, especially that uh, with a pop filter on it, this thing here is a, is a pop filter. Basically what this does is whenever I say any noises, any words with P's in, uh, you can sometimes do what's called popping the mic, uh, which means you sort of peek it out and it makes it sound absolutely terrible. Putting a, a pop filter in front of it somewhat stops it, pretty much entirely stops it. They do still sometimes go through. You don't need to spend a lot of money on this one. The, the, this one's like, I don't know, five or ten pounds. Uh, but you could pretty much put a sock over a coat hanger and it would do the same thing or some uh, your mum's old tights or something like that. It's basically the same material. So I suppose we should move on to the headset. The headset that you always see me wear. I'm not wearing it today because obviously I haven't got any games plugged in. Uh, but these are the Corsair Void Wireless 7.1 Dolby Digital Sound headset. Really, really nice. Uh, great sound from them. Um... I'm very, very happy. Minecraft works really well with them. Uh, I'm going to compare most of the stuff to Minecraft because that's what I play on the channel the most. It's what I'm the most familiar with. Uh, as far as hearing zombies and stuff like that is concerned, you can really tell because of the 7.1 surround sound exactly where they are. The only downside of these is the microphone. The microphone really isn't that good. Um, I think when I done an unboxing video, uh, I rated it about a 6 or a 7 out of 10 or something like that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using that microphone for... Uh, general sort of video recording purposes. It's fine if you're talking to friends over like game chat, uh, but not for high quality uh, recording. I'd definitely spend a little bit more money on an extra microphone, on a proper microphone. Uh, for the, what we got next? For the webcam. The webcam that's recording me right now is the Logitech HD Pro C920. I had to write it down because I can never remember it. Logitech HD Pro C920. Uh, it's actually um, sort of second generation now. I think there's a newer generation out of the C920 range. Uh, it's probably the most popular webcam for YouTubers and streamers and, and everything like that. Uh, the new one looks pretty much exactly the same, uh, but I think it has some extra options for 60 frames per second recordings, and I think there's its own inbuilt green screen technology it sort of works i've seen some videos i think linus tech tips done a video on it uh, not so long back uh on on showing that it, it worked but it wasn't like 100 percent great i have my own green screen that i can draw down uh from the ceiling i'll show you that right now hold on it's on like a little pulley thing and if i pull it the right way and there's the green screen so uh i'll pull it up I like the window behind me. So, uh, my the Logitech webcam. Let me get comfy again. Ugh. So this webcam does have green screen 
technology built into it. A chroma key uh, is what it's actually called. So it'll just replace anything green and, and ignore it and not sort of film it. The new Logitech C920 range, I think it's called the C920 still. It might be called something different. I can't quite remember. I don't have it, obviously, the new one. Um, doesn't need a green screen behind it. It'll pick up, like, the curtains and everything behind me. It would ignore and just pick up, like, the person that is tracking. It worked relatively well, but wasn't, like, strictly on point it was not as good as actually having a green screen behind you uh so yeah that's what that is we'll move on to the keyboard for the keyboard i have the k70 rapid fire rgb most of my stuff is rgb because uh, it's from corsair you guys know corsair sponsor me uh, and they always send me through uh, a bunch of stuff which i really appreciate and uh, it's a really nice keyboard i've got it uh color sk- color synced to my computer the computer's the sort of red white and black sort of color scheme so i tried to match the keyboard to that it has its own software uh course corsair q i think the software is called and uh it allows you to link up all of your corsair products together so i actually have my keyboard my mouse my mouse mat my headphones and maybe something else i think i'm the computer itself and basically you can control all of the leds uh, and all of the RGB stuff on each of your products straight from that software. It'll even allow you to link them together so they all flash at the same time and they all stay in time with each other. Uh, I used to have it on a rainbow effect. It looked really nice, uh, but since I've had the red and um, white and black sort of style computer, having like yellow and green LEDs obviously didn't quite match. So I like to have it all in sync together. You can program it so each individual light will light up by itself if you want. Um, I, I've got mine on like a little bit of a night ridery inspired theme. For the mouse, uh, I haven't actually shown you this mouse before. Uh, I used to have the Qatar, Corsair Qatar mouse, which I'd done the unboxing for. Uh, but since then, I actually went and got a Scimitar RGB Corsair, again, uh, RGB Scimitar. Uh, and the reason I got this is because off camera, when I'm not playing Minecraft, uh, would you believe it, I do actually play other games. Uh, I play a lot of Elite Dangerous, which is a space simulation game, galaxy exploration, and stuff like that. And having a mouse with a bunch of buttons on the keyboard makes it really, really easy for me. I can have my landing gear, I can have lights, I can have targeting and and cycling weapons and galaxy map and system maps all mapped onto my mouse. So I don't have to take my hand off my drive controls on the keyboard uh, in order to press other ones. Makes it very, very handy. So uh, I think it's got got 12 side buttons, thumb buttons, I think they're called. Uh, Two buttons on the top are for increasing or decreasing the DPI setting. So you can make uh, basically make the mouse more sensitive or less sensitive is the most easiest way for me to explain it. For the mouse mat, I use the MM800 Polaris. That's a mouthful. Uh, Again, RGB from Corsair. Uh, Really nice mouse mat. It's a solid mouse mat, so it's not one of those uh, flimsy uh, fabric ones. Uh, I used to use fabric ones. I have no problem with fabric ones. But this one's really nice because it's actually over the... Um, edge of where my desk goes together. I have a three-piece glass desk and when uh, if I had a fabric soft style mouse mat I can imagine that the mouse would actually sort of hit the ridges because the table isn't perfectly flush. It's got like a couple of millimeter uh, dip between the three pieces, the two rectangular pieces and then there's like a semicircle corner piece. Having a hard mouse mat uh, allows the mouse mat to sort of bridge the two joins and allows you to use it really really easily i'm really really happy with it again because it's rgb it's all programmable you can choose whatever color you want uh i think when i done the review on this uh, on the channel uh a few months back now i had it on like a rainbow setting it looked absolutely beautiful and uh and now i've changed it to just nice solid red i was thinking about putting it on like a breathing red so it's sort of hum you know whoa 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 uh, so I might do that if that's possible. I have to look into the course, uh, into the uh, Q software. What have we got next? Uh, we've done that. We've done that. Uh, the monitors. I don't really need to talk about that much. I've got two Aces and one LG. The two Aces are the same size. I think they're 21 inch. They might not. Yeah, 21 or 23 inch. Something like 21 inch. I'm pretty sure. And then the LG one is I think 18 inch or 19 inch or something like that. Uh, so I have the. LG one uh, higher up. It's just where I put my recording settings, Skype, little notes I have on what I need to record on certain videos and stuff like that. 
Uh, they're very, very budget monitors. I've had these for quite a long time now. They're actually going to be my next upgrade. Hopefully sometime this year I'll be upgrading to 4K monitors. Uh, not that it'll make really a difference to you guys on YouTube, uh, but for me, when I'm gaming off of YouTube and stuff like that, uh, just for my own casual satisfaction, uh, it'll just make the gaming experience uh, better. So they're just 1080p, uh, I think 60 hertz monitors. Uh, let's jump into what I actually use to record my stuff then, very briefly, uh, to finish off this video. Okay, so I've pulled the green screen down, so now everything behind me is invisible. And uh, this is my desktop, so not really much on here. We've got Minecraft, City Scholars, everything is... I've still got some stuff installing, uh, still. <laughs> Uh, I haven't got everything set up yet uh, for it, uh, but I do have Minecraft City Skylines, which I want to start a new series on. Would you guys be interested in that, doing a new City Skylines series? Hmm, maybe. Uh, Elite Dangerous, obviously, I play off camera. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V, I don't really play on the PC, but I downloaded it for the benchmark, and I'm sure I'll have a play with it at some point. Planet Coaster, I want to do a... Uh, series on as well. Are you guys interested in that? Would you guys want to see a Planet Coaster series? I really want to do it. I haven't played it at all. It's literally been untouched. Um, I've sort of. I, I may be doing. I maybe do an hour, possibly, before I start recording it with you guys, just so I know the controls and stuff like that. But I haven't even watched anything on YouTube about it because I want to sort of experience new for myself. And what Shocks do is literally been untouched. It's not even installed properly. Um, uh, it's just sort of downloaded with the icon there because I got it free with the GTX uh, 1080 when I built the PC. It was just a free game code that was in there. So, uh, for recording PC footage, I use a program called OBS. It'll just load up. Oh, yeah, of course, I've already got it open. That's what I'm recording with right now. If I this is going to be Inception. Are you ready, guys? It's going to be Inception. I'm going to bring this over here. Oh my, there's so many of me. Uh, so basically, OBS, I've got it set at the moment to record my webcam and record my desktop at the same time. But because it's recording this monitor, it's doing like a continuous through the looking glass style thing. Um, free software to download. You can download it, just type in OBS on Google, uh, get the most recent download or whatever for it. Uh, very powerful tool, very easy to use tool. And... Um, it does affect frame rates in games a little bit. Uh, it usually takes around 20, 25% of your performance because obviously it's sort of showing the game twice. So it's rendering the game on your monitor for you to play and see, but it's also viewing the game in OBS. Uh, so it's going to impact all, all game capture software it does impact performance uh, very slightly. But this PC is far too powerful for it to even uh, bother with it. Uh, so yeah, that's what OBS is. When I record on Xbox, I haven't actually downloaded it on here, but I'll use a program called, uh, well, just Elgato's Game Capture Software, I think it's called, or something like that. You can download it from the Elgato website. And uh, that records the footage, the video. But then to record the audio for that, my microphone... I'll use a program called Audacity. Again, it's a free program. A uh, great free program. This is one of the best... This and OBS are the best free programs like ever invented, uh, in my opinion, especially because it helps me out so much. But yeah, very simple. Once you can hit record and it'll record what I'm saying right now. Once you can hit record and it'll record what I'm saying right now. I don't know if that'll actually come through the speakers at all or anything like that. But yeah, I just played it back to you guys. Um... But that's how I record the audio for Xbox footage. And then when I go into the editing software, which is Elgato Game Capture, which is quite strange as I use... Uh, that's Roxio, so Roxio Game Capture, which is quite strange as I use an Elgato. I'll talk about that in a minute. I then put the video in and the audio in and sync it all up together. It's a real pain. It's the only way to really do it, to record Xbox footage. That's how every YouTuber uh, that records console games will do. They'll do very, something very similar to that. In fact, 99% of them likely use Audacity to record their audio uh, like I do. And they sort of sync them up uh, together. PC is different because OBS records the video and the audio at the same time, so I don't have to do any syncing. I can just put the footage straight into any editing software, Sony Vegas, Microsoft Video Editor, Video Wave, whatever they call it, uh, Movie Maker, that's it, whatever, and it'll all be in sync straight away, which is why it's preferable for me and for most YouTubers to record on PC. It just makes things a lot easier. Uh, I use Roxio Game Capture Editing Software, um, 
because I always have is basically the only reason to it. When I first started my channel, I got a Roxio as my first game. It was very cheap before I had the Elgato, before the Elgato was out, I think, even. Uh, I had a little Roxio. I've still got it in a drawer somewhere. And um, it was okay quality, but not, not great. It wasn't even HD, I don't think, back then. It might have been. It might be. I can't remember. Anyway, this software came with it on a CD, and it allowed you to capture by clicking that button. And then once you've captured your stuff, you can click this button, go to the edit, and it'll open up a video editing software. And it was so easy to use uh, because it's sort of aimed at new video editing people and people getting into, you know, video uh, games, recording video style. That's too many videos in one sentence. Recording their video experience. Um, that was so easy for me to start because I had never done anything like this before. Uh, so yeah, this is the software here, and you can just import in uh, videos and, and edit them up and cut and splice and add transitions if you want to and stuff like that. And the reason why I don't use a program like Sony Vegas uh, and these other Adobe Premiere and, you know, these very uh, top-end uh, editing softwares is because I don't really need to edit my videos all that much. Uh, if I'm building, I'm recording with you guys. If I need to cut away for a moment, I'll just stop recording, and then I shall start recording again when I need to come back to you guys. Uh, there's no fancy pictures that come up on screen here and there. This program can do it all. It can make, like, all these weird PewDiePie-style edits, and uh, who else does crazy editing? I don't even know. I can't even remember. Uh, where things flashing up on screen and stuff like that. It can do it all. Uh, it's not the powerfulest tool in the world to be able to... to or not the best tool to be able... To, not the best tool if you want to do videos like that, uh, but it's a great program to start off with. So yeah, because I've needed, uh, I haven't needed anything more powerful uh, of an editing software, anything more complex, I haven't needed to upgrade at all. I have downloaded uh, Sony Vegas in the past and had a look at it, and uh, I just got a bunch of crashes. It just, on the old machine, I haven't even tried it on this machine, I tried it ages ago on the old machine. Um, it installed fine and everything like that, but then as soon as you started editing stuff, it, it just crashed down. Maybe the old computer wasn't as powerful enough to like run Sony Vegas properly or something like that, but because it kept crashing, I didn't even bother. Uh, the computer itself, I'm not going to talk about too much because I've got my own, or it's got its own dedicated video if you want to know the specs and exactly all that kind of crazy stuff. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below as well as links to at least the most similar products I can find for all of these items. Um, obviously the Corsair stuff is all still for sale, but things like the microphone, if I can't find the exact model, I'll find a very similar one. I'm sure they'll probably still do this exact model uh, microphone, but who knows. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I don't want this video to go on for like half an hour or over half an hour. Uh, so we're going to cut it short. If you guys enjoyed it, then hit that like button. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe. If you've got any questions about any of the equipment that I use, uh, then just let me know in the comment section below and I'll try and get back to you if it's like a comment about a uh, question about like hardware or software or uh, stuff like that. But hopefully this will sort of help you out if you wanted to get started on your own channel uh, and you wanted to sort of see what like I have so you can sort of get similar things uh, that's going to work for you. I don't know. You guys wanted the video so here's the video.